Hi everyone. In this video, we're going to find the absolute maximum and absolute minimum values of a continuous function defined on a closed interval. All right, so the function is given. It's right here, f of x equals x to the one half minus one third x to the three halves. And that function is defined for all numbers on the interval from zero to four. And it's continuous, okay, because it's powers of x and roots of x. All right, uh, so here's our solution. Um, so the first step is to find critical points. So what do I mean by critical points? Those are points where the first derivative is equal to zero or the first derivative is undefined. So for critical points, we have a little, a little subset, or steps here, then another layer of steps. To find the critical points, we're first going to figure out what f prime of x is. So, so when you find the critical points, you, you look for f prime of x. And I made a little bullet, which is not, you know, I don't think it's used, to, most people don't use that in math. It's sort of a carryover from, I don't know, Microsoft Word or something or something from Apple or I don't know. But uh, anyway, I put a bullet there. Okay, so I take the derivative of this function above. It might be worth it to highlight it so we can keep our eye on that one. So we're going to use the power rule. I take the one half and I bring it to the front here. So I have one half x to what power? I do one half minus one the power. So that's the power rule. And I would suggest that you're totally okay to do that in your head. So, I mean, there's one half minus one. That's one half minus two halves. Okay, anyway, we'll do that in the next step. But you might just do that in your head. Okay, so for the next one, actually, I made a little something there. Okay, I have one third, and then I'm going to take this three halves and bring it to the front. X to the three halves minus one using the power rule. And then we know that one is two halves. So this part I will do in my head that um, I have one half minus one, so that's one half minus two halves, which makes negative one half. And then, yay, we get a little canceling. Those cancel out, and so it's going to be one half x to the three halves minus two halves. Three halves minus two halves, that's one half. Alrighty. Now, the next step is we're going to solve f prime of x equals zero. And so the way I'm going to do that is I am going to um, first write this piece right here, x to the negative one half as, as one over square square root of x or one over x to the half, either way you want to write it. So we, we you know, we know, we, should, we know that, I don't know, note, x to the one half means the same, means exactly the same thing as square root of x. So we can write that if we want. Minus one over one, I'm, I'm going to write like this. I'm going to, I'm going to have one half times x to the one half, one half to x to the one half. I'm going to write x to the one half over two. Now, the, there's different ways to do this. The way I'm going to do this, though, is I'm going to get a common denominator. Uh, I'm going to and, and write this as a single fraction. That's just what's going to happen here. So I'm going to multiply the denominator of that second fraction by a half. And so therefore, I'll multiply the numerator by a half. That's how I get a common denominator. So that's going to give... Okay, didn't really need to erase that, but... That's going to give, on the denominator of our fraction now, 2x, uh, 2x to the 1 half, 1 minus x to the... All right, now how do I multiply these, these two powers of x? I write, I add the exponents. So I have 1 half plus 1 half is up, up above there. So that gives 1 minus x over 2x to the 1 half. Lots of algebra, right? Calculus, uh, beginning calculus involves a lot of algebra. So, what was my thing again? 
I, I mean, what was the point of this? What, where am I getting at? I'm going to solve f prime of x equal to zero. So I set this equal to zero, and I have one minus x over two x to the one half equals zero. The, the fraction equals zero when the numerator is equal to zero. And that's easy to, you know, see one minus x equals zero, x equals one. And we, we need to, what I, the numerator has to equal zero, you know, which it does at x equals one, and then we have to make sure that x equals one is in the domain. So sometimes we'll do a calculation, get a critical point, or maybe you get like two critical points or something, and it turns out one is in the domain and one isn't. But anyway, one is between one, zero, and four. And then we also find, uh, is f prime of x uh, undefined? for some values of x. That's an important step. Okay, so a critical point is where the derivative is equal to zero. It's a number in the domain where the derivative is equal to zero. x equals one fits that. And it's, or it's a place where the derivative is undefined. So back to our derivative, especially the, the derivative that's written as um, a fraction, I can see that that this fraction is undefined when the denominator is equal to zero. So the denominator is zero when two x to the one half is equal to zero. And that has a solution x equals zero. Sort of thought my handwriting was going okay, but then all of a sudden I slipped into some funny thing there. This word denominator is only half good, the way I wrote it. Okay, so f prime of zero is undefined x equals zero is a critical point. Now, if you were to speak with some someone might say, well, that's an endpoint of our uh, on the on the closed interval. And they might say, well, I'm not sure if that's a critical point. I, for this problem, it doesn't really matter whether I'm going to, let me, we, we, well, let's just move on about, but notice that zero is also an endpoint of this function. So, um, okay. So now, step two is we're going to plot the, critical points and endpoints into f of x equals x to the one half minus one third x to the three halves. I am hoping that this will be something that we can all do without a calculator. I think these numbers are, are, uh, Pretty good for that. I, yeah, I picked the problem so it would work out like that. Um, and, and so I also, if it helps me, but maybe it doesn't help one bit, I can write this as I'm showing here in terms of radicals. So x to one half is square root of x, x to the three halves is, is what? It's x to the one half power, which is square root of x raised to the third power. And so I'm, what I'm trying to do is trying to find the points where f reaches its maximum and where it reaches its minimum. And that can only take place at its critical points and its endpoints if it's a continuous function defined on a closed interval. So I could talk about that even more, explain that, especially if I had a graph in front of me of the function. But let's go ahead and uh, get to business here. So the endpoints, I will plug in. So f of zero, this is one endpoint, uh, right? So, 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 so this is defined on between x between zero and four. That was given, okay? So put in all that stuff and uh, so let's see what we get. Zero, all right, that was sort of straightforward. And then put in four, square root of four, not so bad, minus one third, 
square root of four to the third power. So it's essential when I have this, this uh, four to the three halves, it really helps if I understand that four to the three halves is square root of x cubed, or square root of four to the three halves is square root of four cubed. So this again, right here, this piece, this piece here is x to the three halves power. All right, so uh, this is, I say all right as if you can stop and ask a question, which you cannot. Uh, okay, so I take the square root of, of, of four right here, that's just two, and then raise to the third power, two to the third power is eight. And then what I'll do is get a common denominator. I could see myself, imagine myself making a mistake here, but uh, let's see, two is the same thing as six thirds. Subtract eight thirds, and that makes negative two thirds. Okay, so I, I, what I'm doing is I'm getting values of the function at the endpoints. Now I'll move on to the critical point. Oh, okay, so here's the thing is that the, the endpoint x equals zero is also a critical point. So it doesn't really matter, uh, you know, whether we're thinking about it as endpoint or critical point. Because we're finding, the reason we found the critical points is so that we could find the absolute max and min. And what we're going to do is plug in critical points and we're going to plug in endpoints. So zero is a critical point and an endpoint. But we do have one, which is, a, we'll do that. We'll, plug, we'll put that into our derivative uh, formula here. And off we go. So sort of another fairly straightforward calculation so the square root of one is one raised to the third power, we get one. Um, so one minus one third, that makes three thirds minus one third, and that gives two thirds. So we do that, and oh, does this bug everybody? I wrote plot, why do you do that? Plot the critical points, that must have been driving everybody crazy. Then if you have a, I'll call it step three, Compare which one is the greatest, which one's the least. We already know that on our interval between zero and four, that zero is the least x value, but that's not what we're asking. Right? What I mean by which one's the greatest, which one's the least, I mean out of the y values after I plugged in. Okay, we could plot other points, but those aren't going to be an absolute max or min. You could put in, you know, you could put in uh, f of, you could put in one fourth, find f of one fourth. It's not going to be a max or min. So the max or min has to be, is it's a, theorem, it's going to be at a, an, at a critical number, a critical point, or at an endpoint. So this one, you know, it's, I, I wanted to pick one that's a problem that's not too difficult to see. This one here is the, is the minimum. So we end up with absolute minimum. I don't know if I should say compare or just, here's the summary. The summary might be better, but I am comparing I'll write both, and then I'll just put summary here, okay. And I, this one you could just do in your head. Some of the problems are not so easy to, to figure out which one's least and which one's greatest. This is the negative, then you have zero and you have two thirds, so the absolute minimum is at the end point, so we have f of four is negative two thirds, and then out of these three y values, the greatest y value is two thirds. And, and usually uh, on these problems, you know, exercises and books, when you write the answer, you're expected to write both the x and y coordinate of that, of that minimum. So f of 1, uh, I made a mistake, f uh, absolute maximum. f of 1 is 2 thirds, all right? So let's highlight and pick a brighter color, maybe this, dark, this greenish. And, and notice that, again, uh, our critical number has to be in the domain. Sometimes we'll get a critical number or a critical point um, from this step up here, but it's, it's actually not a critical point, but it's not in the domain. But so, sometimes you solve f prime of x equals zero and you get a number that's not in the domain. Don't use that. We're only looking for numbers between that are that are in the interval that's given. And the given interval was between 
uh, 0 and 4. And that fits the bill here. We have 1 and 4 in that interval. Negative 2 thirds of the minimum, 2 thirds of the maximum. So, uh, again, our, our function, our original function is right here. And there's absolute max and absolute minimum. Okay, thank you. That's all.